I'm Melvin, I'm one of the instructors here and my name is Clement. Today we're going to talk about crosswind circuits. Whenever the wind is not perfectly aligned with the runway, there will be a certain degree of wind coming from the side across the runway, and we call this the crosswind. The aircraft handling would have to be adjusted in order to accommodate for the crosswind. Before we dive into the practical side of things, Let's have a look into some of the definitions relating to crosswind circuits. Firstly, heading. Heading is where the nose of the aircraft is pointing towards in relation to the magnetic poles. And track is the direction of where the aircraft is actually travelling. On a windless day, the heading and the track will be the same. However, when there is present on the crosswind, the aircraft may not necessarily be travelling in the same direction as the heading. The difference between track and heading is what we call the drift angle. The stronger the crosswind, the greater the drift angle. Before practicing crosswind circuit, there are a couple of things that we have to be aware of. Firstly, during certification of an aircraft, a maximum demonstrated crosswind limit will be published by the manufacturer. On a Diamond DA40, the crosswind limit is 20 knots of crosswind. When a crosswind component is higher than this figure, it is probably a wise decision to not go flying. Secondly, the aircraft will be more difficult to handle with the presence of crosswind. In strong crosswind condition, it could lead to an unstable approach. And when that happens, please remember, going around is always an option. Thirdly, conducting a flatless approach during strong crosswind condition can stabilize the approach, making it easier to handle during gusty conditions. Let's imagine now we're about to conduct some crosswind circuits. We're now at the start of the runway, perfectly lined up with the runway center line, ready for takeoff. We can now apply full power, at the same time apply ailerons fully into the wind. While accelerating, conduct the same checks as you would on normal takeoff. By the time the aircraft is rotating and is getting airborne, ailerons should be neutralized to level the wings when it's off the ground. After the aircraft is airborne, keep looking at the runway center line and use it as the guidance for lateral tracking, making sure the aircraft is maintaining the center line tracking, but not being pushed by the crosswind and drifting to either side of the runway. The drift angle is to be maintained throughout the entire upwind length of the circuit to ensure the aircraft is tracking along the extended runway center line. Upon reaching 500 feet, we can start to turn on the crosswind. Depending on the wind direction, we may have to adjust the turning point on the downwind. If there is more headwind, extend crosswind leg for a couple more seconds. Whereas if there is a tailwind, turn earlier on the downwind. We want to be at 45 degrees to the runway threshold at the start of downwind. After established on downwind, to maintain a downwind track parallel to the runway, we have to apply drift according to the wind direction and wind strength. That is why tracking of a crosswind circuit is exactly the same as a normal circuit. Not only that, the downwind radio call, the HHSS checks, and the pre-landing checks are the same with the normal circuit, except that we are applying drift as we are doing it. On the late downwind, when the runway threshold is 45 degrees behind the aircraft, we can now start to turn onto base. Depending on whether the aircraft is getting headwind or tailwind on base, adjustment has to be made in order to maintain the descent profile of a normal circuit. If there is more presence of headwind, more power is required to reduce the rate of descent, as the ground speed of the aircraft is now reduced. On the other hand, if the tailwind is pushing the aircraft along on base, reduce power as the ground speed will be higher than normal. Apart from the power adjustment, we have to apply enough drift to maintain the perpendicular tracking with the runway center line. As the aircraft is getting closer to the end of the base leg, the timing of turning onto final may require adjustment depending on the wind. If there is headwind, delay the final turn as headwind will be pushing the aircraft against the turn. However, if there is a tailwind, turn final earlier, and the tailwind will be pushing the aircraft to the runway center line, and possibly beyond the center line if the turn was initiated too late, and we call that overshooting the runway. When established on final, because of the presence of crosswind, you will see the nose of the aircraft isn't aligned with the runway center line, and that is perfectly normal. At mid final, Conduct a short final check and continue with the approach until reaching the threshold. At the runway threshold, start to apply the crosswind landing technique. First of all, 
As you can see, the nose of the aircraft isn't aligned with the runway. Apply sufficient rudder accordingly to line the nose up with the runway. If the wind is coming from the left, apply right rudder. If the wind is coming from the right, apply left rudder to line up. Secondly, apply aileron into the wind to stop the aircraft moving laterally. If the wind is coming from the right, apply right rudder to maintain the aircraft right over the center line but not moving sideways. If the wind is coming from the left, apply left aileron. If the rudder we applied is insufficient to line up the aircraft with the runway, it could mean a crosswind is excessive and going around is probably a better option. When the correct amount of rudder and aileron has been applied during a crosswind landing, you will realize the nose is lined up with the runway center line, but the wings aren't level. But that is totally normal. Keep going with the approach and raise your eyes from the second center line to the end of the runway and start to fly straight and level. Control the rate of descent by applying back pressure and let the main gear touch down. Because the wings aren't level, you'll realize the main gear that is into the wind will touch down first before the other main gear followed by the nose. As the aircraft is rolling out, start to apply ailerons into the wind to stop the wing from being picked up by the gusty wind. It is a bit like the takeoff roll but in reverse. If we're intended to do a full stop landing, slowly apply brakes at the same time apply more back pressure until the aircraft is slowed down to a normal taxi speed. Vacate the runway by following one of the taxiway lead lines. If we're intended to do a touch and go, keep applying the ailerons into the wind, raise the flaps from landing to takeoff and apply full power. As full power is applied, Use rudder to maintain center line and start to neutralize the aileron as the aircraft is picking up speed. When rotation speed is reached, aileron should be neutralized to avoid any banking as the aircraft is getting airborne and that will be the start of another crosswind circuit. During strong crosswind condition, conducting a full flat landing can be quite challenging. Hence, a flatless landing can be used in an attempt to stabilize the approach and increase the chances of a successful landing. One of the reasons why flatless landing can be easier during strong crossing conditions is because of the higher approach speed. When the approach speed is faster, there will be more airflow around the control surfaces, especially the rudder. Because of this, the rudder would feel more responsive and would have more authority when yawing the aircraft. Less rudder input is required to line up with the runway, so it should be easier to handle during the landing phase. And those are the reasons why a flatless approach can be used during strong crosswind or gusty condition to help with stabilizing the approach. Okay, when conducting a crosswind circuit, first of all, we have to determine where the wind is coming from. Look at the windsock. You can see the windsock is pointing to the left hand side, which means the wind is coming from the right. In our current position, the wind is behind us. So on takeoff, the wind will be coming from the right hand side. When lining up with the runway, we can use the crosswing technique. During the takeoff, while accelerating on the ground, deflect the aileron fully to the right into the wind. As the aircraft is picking up speed, slowly neutralize the aileron. As the aircraft rotates, aileron should be completely neutral. The aileron stops the wing from being picked up by the wind, increases the stability of the aircraft during the takeoff roll. We have completed the lineup checks and are ready for lineup. So I will do a radio call first. Turn in traffic, Diamond, Mike, November, November is entering and rolling runway 22. Will remain in the circuit. Turn in traffic. Wind is behind us, so full forward stick. Use the appropriate crosswind technique. Final is all clear. Start to turn right and line up the runway. Now, full right stick. Ailerons into wind. Slowly accelerate and apply right rudder to maintain center line. Full power. T's and P's in the green. RPM is normal. Slowly neutralize the aileron and rotate when the ailerons are fully neutralized. Right after takeoff, look at the remaining of the runway to ensure the aircraft is maintaining runway tracking. You can see the nose of the aircraft is pointing slightly to the right to maintain the line tracking. At 300 feet, after takeoff checks, flaps up, fuel pump off, landing lights off. Q 
Keep applying right rudder and maintaining bad spread of climb. Right, centre, centre, left. Start turning at 500 feet. Because the wind is coming from this way and behind us, the ground speed on crosswind will be faster. Therefore, we'll spend less time on crosswind. So we have to turn early on downwind, otherwise it will be a very wide downwind. At this point, start to unbank. One thousand feet, level the wings, lower the nose, reduce power to normal cruise. Around here, start to turn downwind. Because we have thirteen knots of tailwind, that is why we're really fast on crosswind. Keep turning onto downwind. Because the wind is coming from the left, so we have to turn more than a downwind heading to compensate for the crosswind. And we call this the crab angle. You can see the nose of the aircraft is pointing to the left, but it's drifting to the right as the wind is coming from the left. On downwind, do the normal free landing checks, brakes off, oil T and P's, undercarriage make sure master max, fuel pump, fuel select the fullest tank, autopilot disconnect, seatbelts all good, lights on. Maintain 1000 feet and check for correct heading, check for the correct spacing. If you reckon the spacing is too close, turn right for 10-15 degrees to fly wider. Or if you think it's too wide, turn towards the runway and fly a closer spacing. Keep flying on downwind until the runway threshold is 30 degrees behind us, which is about now. 11 inches metal pressure. Right, center, left. Star to turn left. Speed check, flap down, push forward to counteract the balloon, and let me do a radio call. Jordan traffic, Diamond Mike, November, November, turning base runway 2 to number 1 for a full stop. Jordan traffic. After turning onto base, you can feel the aircraft is slowing down. This is exaggerated with the headwind. Also, the wind is coming from the left, so we'll return more to the left to ensure tracking perpendicular with the runway. Because of the headwind, increase the bit of power to ensure the rate of descent isn't too fast to maintain a correct profile. You can see the aircraft is not as stable as normal because of the gusty wind. Because of that, we'll have to increase the approach speed on final and also delay the turn onto final because of the headwind. Speed checks, flaps down. Final checks, pitch, undercarriage, fuel pump, full flap. Final checks complete. Start the apon S back airspeed. Four fingers on the second center line. You can see the nose is pointing to the right because the wind is coming from the right and that is perfectly normal. We call this the crab angle. Keep maintaining the runway center line tracking with the nose pointing slightly to the right. Aim point aspect shape the runway airspeed 75 knot because of the stronger wind to stabilize the approach. During the flaring stage, because the nose is pointing to the right, apply left rudder and right aileron to line up with the runway. Continue with the aim point aspect airspeed. After passing the piano key, reduce power to idle, apply left rudder, right aileron, and start to flare. After touchdown, ailerons into wind, ease in on the brakes, and gradually apply back pressure. And this is a crosswind landing. It is now the time for threat and area management for the crosswind circuit lesson. So in this lesson, what are some of the threats and areas that we have to know about before conducting crosswind circuits? One of the obvious threat is the crosswind. If the crosswind is excessive, Practicing crosswind circuit is not recommended because taking off and landing in a mild to moderate crosswind would already complicate the normal circuit operation, let alone when a crosswind is strong. Therefore, it is not recommended unless you have a qualified instructor on board to assist your training. If the approach is too unstable, please bear in mind going around is always an option. 
and try again on the next one. Or even try a flat less approach. Secondly, the crosswind landing technique is a bit more challenging than a normal landing. In a normal landing, more of the emphasis is on the application on the back pressure and the attitude to control the rate of descent during flare. However, during a crosswind landing, not only we have to control the rate of descent and the attitude of the aircraft, but also we have to use aileron and rudder to control the alignment with the runway. The way to manage this is to brief yourself prior to the flight, or even in flight, to brief yourself on which combination of aileron and rudder to use during flare, to minimize the risk of mistakes. And that is it for today guys, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our Learn to Fly YouTube channel for more great content and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.